Hey music producer, have you fallen for the gear trap? I have too. That's why I made this video on should you be buying new gear or investing in your music marketing. Let's check it out. An easy mistake for producers to fall into is the new gear trap. I get it. The latest ad you saw has you thinking that your beats will finally be pro quality if you just get that plugin. You saw a YouTube tutorial where the guy was using the FabFilter plugins to make his mixes loud. You heard from your buddy who produces it. If you just run your stuff through analog tubes, it'll be the secret sauce to getting you on that major label. The sample pack from your favorite producer is finally going to be the sound that makes you sound like them. Really? If you believe this, I've got news for you. I have fallen for the same promises, and I'm here to tell you new gear, samples, synths, effects, limiters, etc. can be inspiring, but they don't get you signed or even get you noticed. Best shot at getting signed to those labels, making your mix sound pro, etc. is putting your reps in in the studio so you train your ears how to hear properly. Until then, your time's better spent creating quality music, understanding EQ and compression, learning how to get the sounds out of your head and into your DAW, improving your songwriting ability, stage presence, performance skills, etc. You gotta give labels, promoters, and music reviewers a reason to care about you. Before you buy new gear, how well have you mastered the gear that you already have? Let's be objective. How well do you know the synthesizers that you already own? Can you sit down and know which knobs to tweak to make the sound that happens in your head? Do you know which waveforms to choose? How many sample libraries do you have? And how many times do you end up reusing the same sounds in the next track? How many of the same channel compressor do you have? How often do you actually use different EQs? Are you writing music with a purpose or are you endlessly scrolling through presets, throwing stuff in and just trying to figure out what will sound good? Developing your own sound isn't so much about how many toys you've got to play with, but how well you flex the tools you've got. Which leads to the next question. How long did it take you to learn how to engineer and write music to a professional level? And how many plugins, sample packs, etc., have you purchased along the way? Consider this. How much time or money have you invested into growing your audience, building a fan base, or learning how to market yourself? You may write the best music ever written, but who's listening? If a tree falls in the woods, but nobody's around to hear it, does it even make a sound? Like the proverbial tree, if you're making music but not promoting it, how do you expect anyone to know who you are? Let's assume you're trying to grow a Spotify audience. There are thousands of songs being uploaded to the platform every day, and you've got to compete with all of them, not to mention everything that's going to be up there tomorrow. Do you stand out from the noise? Are you growing your fan base there? Or are there lots of crickets chirping? Do your tracks have that under a thousand plays indicator? Maybe they aren't connecting with your potential fans. So how do you connect with new fans? Building a fan base isn't easy. And no matter what anyone tells you, there's no magic solution that's going to take you from unknown to rock star. The good news is you have a better shot at making it today than you ever did before. The power of social media is unparalleled and the tools to get your music in front of potential fans are very powerful. Let's get to the juicy part already. Teach me something about marketing music. Okay, how can you leverage these tools to get new fans? Either you've got time or you've got money or maybe a little bit of both. Which strategy you use will depend on your personal situation. If you're short on money or you're long on time, you can take the personalized route of connecting directly with people who are in your target demo. Build a list of labels that you want to get on. Build a list of artists that you sound like. Build a list of venues that you want to play at. Now spend some time on social media engaging with the people who fall under these categories. Don't spam them actually make a point to try to make personal connections. Check out my SoundCloud fam is not the ideal first message to receive from anyone. You're trying to make friends, be human. If you have too many responsibilities or just can't bring yourself to go connect with people directly, your other option is running ads. Ironically, you'll have to do the same basic prep work. Build a list of labels you wanna be on, build a list of artists you sound like, build a list of venues you wanna play at, then you set up ad campaigns that target those people or people who attend them. Here's the kicker. You can't just turn on the ads and say, go listen to my music. You've got to interrupt their scrolling pattern and get them to click on the link in your ad. So you need to have ads that actually speak to your target audience. Of course, this means you'll have to acquire some new skills and tools. I know what you're thinking. Wait, earlier you said I shouldn't just buy a bunch of gear. Yes, I said that. You shouldn't be blowing money on redundant equipment when you probably already have one or two things that already do the same thing. I told you to stop wasting money buying a ton of presets and sample libraries you don't use. I didn't say there wouldn't be a cost to building a fan base. You need to learn how to use the various platforms, how to set up your targeting correctly, or you're going to waste a lot of money. I know because I've done it. You need to learn how to read the analytics and understand which of your ads are performing, and you're also going to need to learn how to craft messaging that gets people to buy into your artist's journey. You need to ensure your brand is consistently represented across all touch points so your fans recognize it's you without having to dig too far, otherwise they might just keep on scrolling. Don't make them work for it. Make it as easy as possible to become your fan. Does this sound too complicated? Did you think it was going to be easy or even free? I told you there's no magic bullet. You're going to pay with time or you're going to pay with money. 
Getting signed may seem like the cure-all for this situation, but that's only if you're getting signed to a big label with clout. The truth is, until you've got a buzz, it's unlikely that labels that are worth your time are going to want to sign your music. Smaller labels, in my experience, invest very little in new artist development, they don't have big marketing budgets or often know what to do with it, and they do tend to focus on the wrong goals, which puts the onus firmly on you to build the fan base. I thought this was about buying plugins or something. The point is here that you've got to decide how to best invest your time and resources, whether that's improving your music or learning how to promote it. You've also got to decide how to best allocate your budget, whether that's buying new gear or helping your music broadcast to a wider audience. If you've already got a good computer, a decent set of studio monitors, a good audio interface, a decent mic or instrument, a quality compressor, EQ, limiter, saturator, distortion, etc. Most of that stuff's built into your DAW. One or two solid synths, maybe a decent sample library. Buying more of the same stuff is not going to be a good use of your money. Maybe it's time to start budgeting for marketing your music. If new gear isn't a good use of your funds, and you can't be bothered to learn how to market your music, you're left with the option of hiring someone who does understand this, has experience with the tools, and can do it for you. Here's a really important thing. Good marketers will not promise you exact results. Instead, what they can do is show you case studies and results for clients that they have worked with in the past, and then give you a range of possibilities of what your budget might achieve. Good marketers are going to ask you a lot of questions, understand where your goals are, understand who you're looking to connect with, and then help you devise a strategy that will help grow awareness and attract fans to you. But they're not going to promise you exact numbers, and they'll never promise you overnight growth. So where can you find good marketers? Well, you can look online, but you'll find most of the people on social media are saying things like $100 for 10,000 plays. That is a huge red flag. Don't fall for that kind of stuff. You could go look at sites like Fiverr and Upwork and hire marketers off of there, but make sure that you put together a good list of questions to qualify them and make sure that they understand what they're talking about before you give them your hard-earned cash. The other thing you can do is find people who do present this sort of information. And if you get the feeling that they do know what they're talking about, reach out to them and ask them if they might be able to help. If you like this sort of stuff, I'm going to be doing more videos like this on this channel. So check up here for what YouTube thinks you should see next and check up here for what I think you should see next. Be sure to hit the subscribe icon and turn on the little bell so you get notified when I drop another video. And I'll see you online.